everybody, uh, you find me at the Somerset Rural Life Museum. Uh, I've come down today to have a quick look around, see what's here because the council spent a lot of money renovating this place recently and obviously during lockdown it's been very quiet so I thought now's a good time, sunny day, let's go and have a look around and see what's in there. So let's, it's that way, let's go. The museum is based on what used to be a farmhouse. Um, the land on this side of Beer Lane, which is the south side of Beer Lane, was all farmed until relatively recently when the estate to my right, the residence estate, was built. We're approaching the entrance and it's quite an impressive sight. Let's have a look. So as you can see, there's, uh, there's quite a large house and this forms a major part of the museum and the courtyard built around the barn. The barn here is obviously much earlier and was built by the monks at the Abbey as a tithe farm, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we're into the main museum now, um, it's been changed radically since, uh, since they've done the updates. Um, in here is what would have been the farm kitchen, so let's have a look in there first. Always the heart of um, family life and business life on farms. The kitchen was where people ate, met and discussed matters of the day and matters of the farm. Here in the cabinet is where the china lives for when the vicar comes and if I'm not mistaken, I believe is that Royal Albert? I'm not certain. It looks like one my mum's got which I'm sure is called Royal Albert. And the fireplace, proper black fireplace. And the pans, all there look. Now I don't know if you can hear but they've got sound effects coming out of speakers. Oh, sounds like the cat's in trouble. So over there is the entrance, which is the front door. You can't go up the stairs, so I'll just take a quick look through. And the pantry, where all the good stuff is kept. I don't know if you can see in there. Well, now we need to go through this door and up to the galleries. This is nothing like it used to be when I used to come here. Um, it's been massively changed. Lots of audio visual, I really quite like it actually. It's been done well. So, into here I think. This. Believe it or not, it's made of leather. It's a model of the church tower at St James's in Taunton. Look at the intricacy in that. Fantastic. Unfortunately, I'm getting all sorts of reflections, so you'll have to excuse me. Moving on to the next room. Now that is what you call a doll's house. Look at that, that is amazing. All the farm animals you could possibly want to build your own toy farm in one cabinet. That is amazing. I know you can still buy things like this in toy shops now, but they're very, very expensive. And the school desk. Look at that. The school desk. There is so much to see here, you really should visit. I'm just, this is a skipping stone, this is a very quick look through. Oh, hello. Look, we've got a bike here. Twin headlight, that version. I believe this is one of the bins that they paint for Glastonbury Festival. 
They have rubbish bins sighted across the site and they're painted and they're often very nicely painted, just like that one is. Fancy a cup, anybody? These roof finials, which were made in Bridgewater in the form of dragons, the dragon was the emblem of the Anglo-Saxon kings of Wessex and it often appears on country folklore and was adopted as Somerset's official symbol in 1911. In 2013, a red dragon on a yellow background was chosen as Somerset's flag. Great choice, great choice, I love dragons. Someone's not looking very happy. <laughs> But she'd rather be climbing a tree. Now, this is where a lot of the new stuff is coming. This is um, metal. And they built this outside the building to provide a lift shaft for access, which is good. Unfortunately, it's not working. And we can go downstairs now. And in a minute, we'll be into the courtyard. So we turn this way. This is the farming and working section. This shows you some of the tools that were used when they worked the land and some of the trades and skills that were around in those days. For example, the carpenter and the wheelwright. I don't know who that's for, but not very big, whatever it is. But the tools there, hand tools which hadn't changed in years. I mean, a carpenter today would know how to use those. And this is the saddler. And there's their equipment. That thing has a name, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a saddler's stall, but it's where they work on the saddle and the tools they use. And the glover. Gloves were made traditionally in Glastonbury for many, many years and the leather firms at Moorlands were making gloves. This is a very local industry. And shoemaking, of course. Somerset would not be Somerset without Clarks and all the other associated back factories. And these are the models, they've got a name, I can't remember it, on which the shoes were made. See, that's obviously a lady's shoe there. More like a gent's shoe there. And then as you come over here, we've got the thatcher's tools. So all the tools necessary to thatch a roof. Again, a dying skill, although there are some around today. I believe today that the reeds using thatching are actually normally from Russia these days. That's how your bread would have been delivered by horse and cart. Not a trace of mother's pride or sliced bread to be seen anywhere. How marvellous is that? And the innkeeper. Where would we be without pubs? Somewhere to drink at the end of the day. And the butcher. Although I don't know why there's an axe next to the butchers. I hope they don't use that on the animals. Maybe they did. I'm vegetarian, so I don't know much about that. Now the domestic servant, here we are, look. The soaps. A selection of irons. All the ones that you put in the fire. Although at the end here, there's a couple of modern beasties creeping in. These used to plug in, although I wouldn't fancy touching them when they are plugged in. Here we have a very early hoover. And a bangy thing for banging rugs clean. And the washing machine. So before you had the twin tubs and the hover automatics and all the other zanooses and things, basically it was a dustbin with a wooden thing in the middle that you moved around. Veritable people here, look at these guys. 
And as we come back over here, some more domestic tools. Various ways of washing things, and scrubbing things, and getting things clean, and raising the water, look, there's a hand pump. This is hospitals, look, these are doctor's bags. Look at the old milk bottles. They're the size we used to have at school when I was a primary school kiddie. We used to have those. We've all got adverts on them. Proper milk bottles, look at that. The milkman used to come, drop your milk off, take your empties away, no waste at all. And they say we're moving forwards. I don't think so. Beekeeping equipment, early dairy equipment. I always know about this because the seed drill and the plough was invented by a guy called Jeffro Toll. Um, my favourite band were named after him. So this display shows reeds and withies. On the levels, a major industry was making baskets uh, using reeds grown on the levels. Um, the trees were, the reeds were pollarded, pollarded and the willies were taken away and used for making baskets. I'm going to be doing a separate video about that at another time. Even coffins, I mean even today, these are now in demand. So the, 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 the basket making trade is still around. And various assortment of ditching tools there to do with peat. Ditching and peat cutting is another huge industry on the moors. So here I am back out in the courtyard, um, which is the courtyard around which the farm was built. Uh, the buildings which you can see down at the sides are old stables and farm buildings that have been repurposed. And behind me here is the main building, which is the Abbey Barn. Over here, behind me, you can see this barn is built on concrete mushrooms. That was done in, to enable them to store grain and things that they didn't want pesky little furry things eating because the rats and the mice couldn't get up the legs to get in the barn. So that was for grain security. So behind me is the cast iron horse who stands Sentinel over the courtyard and behind him on the hill there you can see Glastonbury Tour in the distance so that gives you an idea where we are. 
So let's pop in and have a look at the barn. So we are now inside the magnificent barn. This was built in the 1340s by the monks of the Abbey and is a truly impressive building. It's one of the foremost medieval buildings that you can actually visit in Somerset now that still exist. It's amazing to think this was contemporary with the Abbey, which is now in ruins. Let's go and have a look. So the massive doors that you can see were to enable hay wains uh, during the busy harvest time to be driven in through one door. They would come through here, they'd be unloaded into the barn here and then they would head off out of the opposite door, kind of like a one-way system. So over here is the sort of vehicle that would have been used to bring that hay here. Only replaced when tractors turned up. So there you are, you have the main barn, the Abbey Barn. An amazing piece of architecture. Full length of this amazing building is 28 metres long. And width is 10 metres. So it's a good size. And the roof, oak. Beautiful beams there. Now, for all of you out there that like a bit of tractor action, here it is. This needs no introduction. This is a grey Fergie. Beloved of tractor lovers everywhere. And to this day, a total classic. Now, the orchard here, to the north end of the barn, there's a traditional apple orchard, and at many times a year, you can actually find sheep grazing in here. In fact, just for the sake of it, over there is a concrete cow. Just like, it's just like being in Milton Keynes. They've got concrete cows, or they did have, I don't know if they still have. So there we are. That's the Somerset Rural Life Museum, or the Abbey Barn, whichever you care to call it. They're both correct. Um, it's been great showing you around. I'm going to come back and do a proper film and interview the staff here at a later date, but I just thought it'd be nice to show you what's here because if you are in Glastonbury, this is well worth a visit and your ticket when you buy it lasts for a whole year. So if you're local and you can come back, you can come in and out as you please, which I think is a much better and fairer way of ticketing than some other places uh, that might charge you once and don't let you back in again. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, do all the liking, subscribing and all that rubbish in the buttons below. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.